So let's talk about nucleic acid structure, and specifically DNA. There's a couple of syllabus objectives that we're going to cover in this video. Firstly, what is DNA? Well, it's deoxyribonucleic acid. It's a double-stranded molecule. In eukaryotes, we find it in the nucleus, and that's the chromosomal DNA that holds the genetic code. Uh, and also, DNA in eukaryotes is also found in the, in the mitochondria and the chloroplasts, and that's involved in uh, metabolic regulation or regulating metabolic processes like photosynthesis and cellular respiration. In prokaryotes, it's found in the cystole or the cytoplasm. Uh, and there's really two types of DNA in bacteria or in prokaryotes. There's the um, chromosomal DNA, which is a, a single ring that's sort of wound up in the, the cytoplasm. But there's also these smaller rings called plasmids, which we'll talk about uh, when we're talking about uh, genetic DNA and genetic engineering. All right, so what does DNA do? It's basically, it's the genetic code. Now, this is the central dogma of genetics, or the central principle. And that is basically that the sequence of the DNA, the, the, the order of these A's and G's and T's and C's, they are genes that code for proteins. Essentially, the genetic code codes for proteins. And very briefly, I'm going to go through this in a lot more detail in another video, but essentially how it works is the DNA remains in the nucleus. It unzips to, to uh, expose a gene. Uh, and then we have these free nucleotides that make a copy of that gene, and that's called RNA. Now the RNA then goes out of the cytoplasm to a ribosome where it gets read, and other types of RNA called tRNA bring along amino acids. And amino acids, when they're put together in a chain, in a certain sequence, that produces the proteins, the structural and functional proteins that uh, make up every organism. So the DNA is the blueprint or the code for making proteins, and that's how they get expressed. Now, one of the syllabus objectives talks about the fact that chromosomal DNA is bound to histones. So what are histones? Well, histones are proteins, and the DNA wraps around these histones to hold it in place, keep its shape, to protect it. But also it's involved in regulation as well because again, the histone can allow it to unwind somewhat to expose a part of the DNA. Um, but anyway, so, so that, that's what histones are, is that they're these proteins. So chromosomal DNA is bound to histones in eukaryotes. Now, so DNA and RNA are both nucleic acids. A nucleic acid is a, a macromolecule, just like a protein is a macromolecule made up of amino acids. But this case, the nucleic acids are made up of building blocks called nucleotides. And a single nucleotide is made up of three parts. We have a pentose sugar, that's either ribose for RNA, or deoxyribose for DNA, and then we have a phosphate out to the side, and then we have this thing called a nitrogenous base. So you'll see that the actual backbone of the DNA is made up of the sugar and phosphate. The sugar and phosphate is repeating here, and that provides, and that provides a backbone of the DNA. And what's sticking out here in the middle are the nitrogenous bases. And you can see there's different types. There's T's, there's C's, there's G's, and there's A's. And what does that mean? Well, A is adenine, G is guanine, thymine, and cytosine. And I've got slash uracil because in RNA, there's no thymine, it's replaced by uracil. So RNA has just got a single chain, whereas DNA has got two chains. Now, one thing I'm gonna to explain to you later is that they actually run anti-parallel. So one's running in this direction and the other's running in that direction, but more on that later. So it's the actual bases, the nitrogenous bases that are actually bonded together like rungs of a ladder. And there's a certain order in which they hold together as well. And let's talk more about these bases first of all. So we have two different types of bases. We've got things called purines and pyrimidines. Purines you can see have got two rings and pyrimidines have got one ring. So there's two pyrimidines, adenine and guanine, or A and G, and we've got 
in uh, DNA, we've got two pyrimidines, thymine and cytosine, and the thymine gets replaced by the uracil in RNA. So how do we remember this? Well, I remember cut the pie. C-U-T, C-U-T, um, and pi. Now, and also the other thing is that there is a single ring, the, th uh, um, the primidines are a single ring, so that kind of reminds you of pi as well. Okay, cut the pi. So when we have the two chains of DNA together, there's a specific way in which the bases line up. They always line up in what we call complementary base pairs. The A's are always with the T's and the G's are always with the C's. This is for DNA and for RNA, the T is swapped for the U. One way to remember this is at the Gold Coast. Another way to remember it is that the, the straight and pointies are the um, A and the T, so they're together, and the curved um, letters are the G and the C, and they're together. Um, but so they, they always line up in that way. These are complementary base pairs, and that is relevant for the RNA as well. The reason for that is that when a copy of the DNA is made with RNA, um, it's the complementary bases that get lined uh, that that um, that get laid down. So a summary then of the differences between DNA and RNA. There's a difference in the sugar base, deoxyribose versus ribose in RNA. The bases are different. Um, a, G, and C are the same in both of them, but what's different is thymine in DNA and uracil in RNA. Uh, DNA is a double chain, RNA is a single chain. The DNA's function is it holds the genetic code, whereas RNA, it's more of a transporter of a genetic message, uh, like a part of the genetic message. Now, DNA also has a primary and a secondary structure. The primary structure is our ladder, so we've got our, our uh, uprights of our ladder and then we've got the rungs of the ladder are our bases but the secondary structure is that it wraps around or winds up into a double helix so you'll see that there's this detail here where it talks about a three prime end and a five prime end well we're going to talk about that in more detail in another video uh, but just a last thought is why is it the bases pair the way they do well if we had two purines See, they'd be too wide. Two pyrimidines would be too short. But when we've got one purine and one pyrimidine, it fits perfectly.